Hey guys, welcome back. I am Josh. Uh, today I am going over a time lapse video on how we converted some unfinished attic storage space to a beautiful finished livable space. And I'm just kind of going over to show you and give you some ideas on how I did it. There's multiple ways to do everything, but uh, we want to go ahead and get on in how we went ahead and did this. I want to say thank you for all the subscribers and the support and the positive comments you guys have left. I really love the encouragement and uh, just the feedback. If you want to leave a positive comment or subscribe, go ahead and do that. If you want to leave a negative comment, go ahead and do that. There's always somebody who's got to hate. I like reading those with my morning coffee. So we're going to go ahead and dive right on into how I took this space and made it something beautiful. So one of the first parts of our finish was our custom barn wood ceiling that we're really excited about. I did go ahead and pre-run some lights and put up some construction lights and then put my finish lights in later. I took some roofing black paper and put it on the ceiling. The reason I did that is I knew this barn wood wouldn't be perfect and it's not tongue and groove so I'm going to be able to see some through some cracks and the black just helps it appear better. Now all this barn wood planks, are, I did go ahead and plane down, sand, and stain previously before I did the install. I've been collecting this barn wood from a couple jobs that I had and I was really excited to get to put it to use here. I alternated between 1x8s and 1x6 to make sure I had enough and alternating lights and darks, dark wood boards to make sure it looked better. We do have a more detailed instruction video on how we did this, so if you want, are more interested about that, you can watch that. This room was really long and narrow, so we really wanted to kind of maximize the space we could while still having some wall space. So in between the framing of the trusses, I created a couple little closets, and I uh, thought it'd be kind of just easier to mount the sheetrock as we went. Um, my son thought it'd be kind of fun to learn how to run a screw gun so got to teach him while he's interested and get that daddy time For the wall finish, we went ahead and used a uh, shiplap instead of sheetrock. Um, this was probably one of the most fun things, I think, out of the whole build is because it went by so fast because the whole thing's very custom. And this just installed really nicely and quickly. Now, the reason we went with shiplap over sheetrock is, for one, we want a unique look, but it also, um, to carry sheetrock up into that room would have been a little more challenging, big sheets. So that was one incentive of it. The other incentive is we just wanted that unique look to this whole room and we wanted shiplap on all the walls. So that's partially why we did it too. Now, when we did the install, I made sure I started on the ceiling because that was the most important part for me, getting tight to that wood ceiling and then working my way down. I did use construction adhesive and then 18 gauge brad nails because I didn't need as large nails and I like that because when you fill the holes it's a little easier to hide than a larger nailer. So I went wall by wall at a time making sure the corners all lined up, staying level, adjusting as needed. Um, I did not miter the inside or outside corners because I'm going to come back and trim them. That's just kind of a look I like a little bit better. Looks a little less modern to me but to each their own. Now, where I'm working right here on the drywall, this was a closet and I actually punched open the wall to open up to the attic in the garage, so that's why there's sheetrock there. And I wanted it to feel more cohesive and all feel like it's all one room, so I went ahead and covered 
this these walls as well. These are my custom little closets and because they are little I do need some custom sized doors. Now I cannot buy the size of door I needed at the store unless I bought a custom door and by the time I do that it just it would take way too long and it would cost more. So I went ahead and got some hollow core slabs and ripped them down to the width I wanted and cut them down to the length I wanted. The reason I went hollow core is because I didn't need the extra weight of a solid core door want them to work really smoothly um, but with a hollow core door it's not doesn't have wood all the way around it and when I cut that down I lost the solid around the perimeter so what I did is cut some new furring to replace what I removed out in a hollow core door there's also some like webbing in the center and that's what you see me removing here with my jigsaw just kind of create a space for that new wood to go in I went ahead and glued it with some construction adhesive and slid it in. Added a couple staples to hold it in place, which is no problem because I'm going to hide it with some trim later. Now since I removed my one side with the hinges, I had to remortise my hinges in which is not a big deal. I went ahead and just marked them out and then took a router and then one by one went ahead and routered it out checking making sure got my depth and being really slow and precise. Let's test fit it and see how it looks. It looks nice. So now that I got my doors made I do still have to I was going to go ahead and face them and I wanted them to match um, some barn doors I have on my house which has got a K style they call it. Now I wanted to face them with something thin I didn't want it bulky like one by so I took some Luon really thin plywood and ripped it down to one by four widths and then cut it to fit the perimeter of the door. Went ahead and glued it. Also added a couple staples to hold it in place. Here comes the cross bucks, and this is why I guess they call it the case tile. There's cross bucks only going on the from one corner to corner on the lower and the upper, so it looks kind of like a K. Go ahead and glue that in there, add a couple staples. The staples will get filled since I'm going to paint the doors anyway, so that was not a problem. Clamp it all up, let it dry. And this is what it looked like before paint. Kind of nice and cute. I like it. Now I need to build some custom sized jams as well for that door. So I went ahead and mortised out for the other side of the hinge and then just cut the board to the length I wanted. And then uh, cut my top and my other side, make sure I glued it and then stapled it. And voila, you got a door jam. Now I still need some door stop on the other side, but I wanted to go ahead and do a test fit, make sure the door worked well, did, and go ahead and do the install. 
of both doors before I went ahead and moved to trim or the, installing the door stop. So once I got those doors installed, I was work, making quick work and reinstalling more shiplap on this wall, making sure to start from the top, work my way down, again lining up the corners with each other, checking level as we go. And the reason I started from the top going down is I want to make sure I'm tight to that top of that ceiling. It's very important because I don't plan on trimming or caulking or anything up there. So working my way down, just making quick work here. Um, you'll see that I'm also stopping shy on the left side where I'm working and that's because I have planned for some built-ins which I will show you a little bit later. So just working on this, trying to get ready for the next, th next part of the project. So once I got my ship up installed, I just couldn't help myself. I have one window in this room and I really wanted to trim it. I've been waiting because I really do enjoy doing this craftsman style casing on it. So I was just couldn't wait and it's satisfying to me. So next to the ship lap, this was one of the most fun parts. I couldn't, I got a little ahead of myself even before I was doing a trim. So I had just got some common pine prime. I ended up priming it, sanding it, painting it. But the reason I like kind of the common pine is it gives a little bit of imperfection with knots and you can kind of see it. So once you paint it, you get a little imperfections, but refined look. I got my little helper in the background putting on some wood filler, probably a little more filler than you need. Um, but, you know, she's got her headphones on and she's rocking to the beat. So I'm just proud of her for helping out. So when I was mentioning we we're going to do some built-ins where I was stopping the shiplap, these are the built-ins we had went ahead and made. They are custom. I had some good help from a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine who builds custom cabinets, who was gracious just to let me come build them in the shop, basically have him tell me what to do, and that made it really nice. So very thankful to Chris for letting me do that and helping me out with this project. So now I went ahead and used Malamine for my material because it's very durable, didn't have to paint it, it was quick, just did some edge banding on it and it worked out really smoothly and since my color is white, it worked out really nice. So I went ahead and doing an install on the lowers that are two feet deep and making sure that to line them up perfectly, space them sideways and up and down, keeping them level because I'm gonna to have to come and trim them out later, so I wanna make sure to keep them perfectly even, all uniform. These lowers are gonna get drawers and doors later. I'm not worried about that now, just getting them installed. So now once I got the bases installed, I went ahead and started working on mounting my uppers to the lowers. Just screwing them from the bottom, clamping them down as I do. Now the uppers are only 12 inches deep and the reason we shrunk them is because the ceiling slopes down and I couldn't go as deep. So, which works great because we're going to go ahead and make bookshelves out of the upper parts. So the depth of 12 inches worked really well. So while installing, we just clamped it down to keep it in place, make sure to line them to the lowers because they're built to the same width, kind of making them look like one solid cabinet. And there we go, we got them installed. So now we got, I'm now working on installing my door slabs. Just went ahead and got some hinges, 
some euro hinges and then um, we morsed out in the drawers or in the doors for the hinges just made some door slabs also alumalamine worked really efficiently and really quickly and now I made these doors a little bit oversized to cover up that seam where the upper and lower meet so it looks more like one to kind of hide that and these soft clones hinges seem to work really good and there we go now once I got all the doors installed I wanted to go ahead and work on trimming it out I just used some 1x3 material because I thought that looked very proportion well and I'm just trimming out my perimeter of the cabinets attach them with some brad nails because I will be painting these now I'm facing those studs with just some 1x3's as well to cover it up and make it all look like one cabinet and there you go it looks really nice just need a little bit of caulk and paint get those drawers slid in still need their faces yet I got my two little helpers back they really wanted to help out and they like feeling needed and I might have bribed them with some sort of treats but that's good for the kids anyways we're getting ready to paint so we're getting prepped for paint right now sanding all the nail holes that we puttied and I'm doing some caulking on the trim all the base and the vertical trim really like that look just get some white paintable caulk smooth it out with the wet finger comes out really nice so now as getting prepped for paint we're doing some masking this is a very tedious job my wife was gracious enough to help me um, which was very handy when I was trying to mask off the ceiling we really don't want anything on the ceiling so we're protecting it really well um, this was just a very tedious job but remember anytime you prep it's most of the work um, so if we get prepped really well the paint job will come out that much nicer aha we're ready for paint now I didn't want to keep the camera in the room the whole time I'm spraying I just want to show a little bit of the action but we were spraying all white and it was very satisfying it came out really nice so once I pull in the masking off we were very careful because this masking took a long time around the cabinets we only painted the face of the trim and not the malamine so we scored it with a knife and peeled back that masking very carefully my wife did a really nice job so I do appreciate that I was a little probably overwhelmed with this whole project so it was really nice for her to come help out at the end these are our wood shelves that we were working on for our bookshelves we wanted that contrast of wood and white and they're coming out really nice just had to cut them down get some really pretty hardware mount it to uh, these doors to kind of just help dress them up these are some big slabs so I went with some large black hardware nice I think that dresses it up nice and here are our final finished wood shelves they look really nice so I actually took some stair treads and just cut them down and notched them in to fit seemed to be the most efficient way took some stain and clear looks really nice nice moving on to installing some really pretty decorative lights kind of got a carriage style give some ambiance they match some other lights in the house really like this style let there be light yes we're adding my construction lights up now I'm installing the final lights which is some retrofit LED can lights works really nice getting all the outlets in all the covers in And oh my gosh guys here we go this is the final result we got the carpet in it is complete now oh my gosh we just love it looks great got that old house charm we were really trying to capture with the, the wood and the shiplap walls with the white and some of the lights try to mix some of the old with the new got all the storage space with the built-ins we just love it 
So we know we'll get to use this room a lot and enjoy it. So we want to just say thanks guys for following along with your time and watching this video. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe if you want to follow along. And if give me some feedback, what you liked about it or what you didn't like about it. If you had questions about it, I just love you know the engagement. So thanks for following along, guys. Until next time, guys. See you later.